Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh dan salam sejahtera. Um, Okey, uh, untuk um, perkongsian uh, kali ini, saya akan berkongsi dengan semua pelajar berkenaan dengan tajuk yang antaranya uh, amat penting uh, apabila kita mempelajari berkenaan dengan pemeliharaan bangunan warisan. So the topic that I will share with all of you today is about the adaptive reuse of heritage building. So what actually is the uh, adaptive reuse? Adaptive reuse uh, refers to the process of reusing an existing building for a purpose other than which it was originally built or designed for. Uh, it is also known as recycling and conversion. Uh, it means that um, adaptive reuse is one of the uh, process or the approach uh, that uh, normally used uh, for heritage building uh, in order to ensure that uh, the building uh, will continuously gain a function. For example, originally the building might be a, might be an office or might be a residential to uh, someone, but currently uh, due to the um, situation and demand, so the original function is uh, no more valid. So the best thing uh, to ensure uh, the sustainability of that uh, particular building, the function has to be changed to something that uh, in need in the current situation. So adaptive reuse is an effective strategy for optimizing the operational and commercial performance of built assets. So just to ensure that uh, we optimize the use of the buildings. So in this photo, uh, the students, you can see that this is the photo of um, one of the hotel in Penang, uh, Penaga Hotel in Penang. Uh, Penaga Hotel uh, originally is a shop houses, old shop houses building that has been turned into a uh, hotel. Uh, so this photo actually uh, is showing uh, the situation during the conservation process and this is after uh, it has been adapted into hotel. Okay. Uh, adaptive reuse of heritage building helps promoting sustainable environments by using the existing building stock. On the other hand, it ensures the conservation of cultural identity by preserving the heritage buildings and giving them a new life. And so, ni antara, uh, this is uh, one of the building in uh, Penang, Chong Fazi mentioned which also uh, turn from residential to a gallery. Okay, so adaptive reuse is not just a sentimental effort to save buildings. It is also a critical process to ensure communities don't use or waste more materials than necessary. And lastly, the entire adaptive reuse process from start to finish, protects the environment while also reducing unnecessary waste. Okay, so this is the photo showing how actually one building, one old building, one old building uh, that has been turned into hotel, I think, eh, to ensure its uh, function and sustainability. So as cities become more and more alike over time, our historic resources become these unique attributes that can't be replicated. So they add things to our neighborhoods that no other buildings can. 
as the populations of cities continues to increase, it's important that these historic resources also fulfill modern users. And these structures need to be functional and utilize space. And so this also one of the uh, photo showing how uh, one old building can be turned into very uh, nice cafes and a very uh, ambience condition, environment, good environment. Uh, so this proof actually um, to all of us that uh, even though you look at one building, so existingly it's very old and has been abandoned for many years, but after having um, the adaptive reuse process, um, surprisingly, the space actually can be um, utilized and can be used uh, to a current needs. Adaptive reuse projects preserve what's best about places, but develop them in a way that is more modern and usable. So this form of development generally preserve the exterior of a building and repurposes the inside. So this is one of the main um, objective of having the adaptive reuse. So the main goal actually, uh, we try as much as possible to retain the exterior of a building, uh, the facade and everything, and repurposes the inside. So we uh, refurbish and we enhance the uh, internal environment of that particular building into a current needs. So it's a means of infusing new life into historic buildings, which can create new beacons in communities. So adaptive reuse projects retain unique and authentic characteristic that cannot be manufactured in new construction. As I told you before, heritage building is like an artifact. So it is some some of the buildings actually uh, are very unique and uh, the finishes, uh, the architecture uh, and it has a very high aesthetic value that cannot be found in any new buildings in our country for example. So we cannot find any other buildings uh, that similar to uh, let's say Bangunan Sultan Abdul Samad so that building actually is very uh, priceless to be preserved as it is. So the best thing actually is uh, to ensure that the old buildings can sustain its function. So the adaptive reuse approach is the best approach to be uh, used uh, for heritage building. Successful implementation of adaptive reuse development blends together modern technology with historic structures, creating an atmosphere and sense of place that is impossible to imitate. And I tell you, actually, if you go to any heritage building that has been uh, gone through an adaptive reuse process, so you will feel that the environment uh, the the condition or the situation inside the building actually is very uh, different compared to uh, any modern buildings so the the environment is very nostalgic so uh, depends on the uh, space and the material uh, that has been used for that particular building so there are a number of factors that go into adaptive reuse projects including flexibility cost and overall beauty. So you can see from this photo, actually this is um, the one of the uh, heritage building that has been turned into hotel and how actually, how beautiful actually inside the building. So adaptive reuse is a great opportunity to save and honor the heritage of a city and the history within. Repurposing a building from a different era helps to create a unique atmosphere for guests when creating a destination location. So this is quoted from Patricia War, the Vice President at War Construction in United Kingdom. 
this is also some of the photos uh, showing uh, the um, historic ambience eh, of the her inside heritage building. Preserving historic building is important because buildings are part of our collective cultural patrimony. Just as we recognize the value of art and artists, historic buildings embody a vast array of craft and artistic skill that is no longer utilized in modern construction. So if I'm not mistaken, these two photos actually has been taken from uh, Suffolk House in Penang. And so uh, inside the building, actually, they arrange for uh, wedding, event, uh, wedding and other sorts of events so very beautiful and historic places provide a sense of connection to both residents and visitors all places provide a link to the past one where those that came before us leave breath and touch so it's about the building but it's also about ourselves these connections to the past provide people a stronger sense of identity so in saving these places by repurposing them, developers can provide a strong sense of culture in areas. The more buildings remain that have a story, the more areas can stay connected to the past while utilizing its interiors for a more modern purpose. So from this photo, actually you can see, if you remember uh, the slide cover, uh, the this is the old KTMB uh, warehouse that has been turned into a uh, sorts of uh, gallery and exhibition center. So you can see from this photo how this adaptive reuse project has been uh, taken where this is the old parts of the building. This is the original buildings. And at the back, actually, you can see this is uh, a new uh, building. Uh, which uh, built from a uh, very lightweight construction, just a uh, glass and steel construction. And this new building uh, attached to these uh, old buildings, which actually uh, uh, makes the building looks very nice. And at the same time, uh, the, the, the project owner still can utilize the space inside these uh, old buildings. So this is actually how actually one adaptive reuse project can be done. Uh, it's not only, I mean, adaptive reuse project is not only um, the process, um, the process that have been taken uh, towards the existing buildings, but uh, it can also involve some uh, extension, some additions to that particular buildings depends on the area and uh, the, loca the location of the building. So adaptive reuse project retain unique and authentic characteristic that cannot be manufactured in new construction. Successful implementation of adaptive reuse development blends together modern technology with historic structures, creating an atmosphere and sense of place that is impossible to imitate. So this is quoted from Brian Hart the director of Danvers Cashman and Wakefield office, also from United Kingdom. Okay, so what is actually the challenges of adaptive reuse? So this is quite interesting where you can see from this photo, so this is an artist illustration, but this is a real project in United Kingdom where, okay, if you, can, if you see from this photo, these two uh, at the left at the left and the right side of the photo you can see that this is the existing or the heritage building but in between actually they built a new uh, buildings uh, which actually have some links to the heritage building and it creates a very uh, nice uh, outdoor space for public to mingle around and uh, this some sitting area uh, position outside the building and this actually proved that uh, old buildings actually have some uh, value that can be retained but with some in new injection to enhance uh, the space 
So some of the challenges of, of adaptive reuse, uh, like any project, adaptive reuse development comes with its own set of difficulties. So in new construction, the material use are new and mostly predictable. However, with pre-existing older structure, there's often a layer of complexity involved, which calls for great analysis and care. So this is because um, in adaptive reuse uh, approach, adaptive reuse process, uh, what actually we should think about actually how actually we should uh, maintain the original fabric of that particular building. So the best buildings were built with characteristics that enable their adaptive reuse and repurpose like natural light and tall ceilings. And as humans, we like to belong to something greater than ourselves, knowing that we can identify with and find useful purpose in things that were useful in a different time and way, enables anthropomorphic connection with our heritage and history. And uh, another challenge that uh, normally facing by adaptive reuse is though all the construction is quite beautiful, there are often materials that are harmful to humans which require careful handling. For example, asbestos and lead-based paint. So uh, mostly, um, most, uh, mostly for heritage building that has been built uh, between, uh, I mean, in 1960s, 1970s. There are many buildings uh, that has been used um, a material like uh, asbestos and lead-based paint. So in this case, actually, um, as we know, those material is uh, very harmful to humans, which can cause uh, a negative side effects. So this kind of material should be removed from the heritage building and it can be replaced with any other materials that uh, best suited for that particular buildings. So this can be done through um, study and analysis which one actually is better to replace the original material. So these materials were used in lots of building materials from the past and need special attention to protect workers and occupants and also the uh, tenants of the house. Uh, creative solutions and innovative approaches to repurposing and meeting code are crucial in successfully transforming these structures. In other cases, the greatest obstacle to transforming an older building can be in the, in the earlier stages of development itself, selecting what it will actually become. So this is very true because normally uh, when we want to decide for <coughs> adaptive, re <coughs> adaptive reuse project, so the, the first thing that we should think about is <coughs> what actually, uh, what actually the new function uh, that we should uh, apply or we should <clears throat> have for that uh, existing building. So this is very uh, crucial uh, aspect that we should think because we cannot simply uh, change the building into something that is not uh, suitable to that particular building. And for example, the building originally is a uh, uh, office building. So uh, based on the uh, study and analysis, so the building owner decided to have an adaptive reuse uh, project for that particular building. But sometimes uh, the owner himself doesn't know uh, what is the new, uh, what is the best new function for that particular building. So this actually has to be Think carefully and uh, best de decision should be made uh, for this as to ensure that the new function is really uh, best suited to that particular building and the building can sustain for a long time. So in conclusion, in transforming cities and buildings, while adaptive reuse projects may pose unforeseen challenges, they tend to be outweighed by the irreplaceable beauty 
craftsmanship and connection to our past they provide. Having a building sit empty does nothing for the neighborhood, but redeveloping the building and giving life to a historic landmark brings a community hub back to life, ready to retell stories of the past while also creating new stories. Reusing an old building keeps the heart and soul alive in a project. So the aesthetics are vibrant with architectural details from yesteryear. Okay. So uh, after this, I would like to share with all of you uh, some of the example of uh, adaptive use project uh, that has been undertaken, but mostly in overseas. Uh, so this is uh, something that we should think and ponder whether this is uh, the best way uh, of adaptive reuse process. Okay, this is uh, an example from uh, Bucharest, the Union of Romanian Architects by Dan Marin and Zeno Bogdanescu from Bucharest. So you can see this building where actually this is the, the this is one of the examples showing how uh, a how one heritage building uh, that only preserve the facade. Yeah, this is only the facade, the facade, but not the interior. So at the back, uh, this is all a new building yeah, built uh, attached to this uh, old facade. I don't know how to, I don't want to uh, make any comments toward this, but what you should think is we should go back to the conservation principle where one of the principle stated that in any conservation approach, it doesn't matter whether you go uh, for adaptive reuse, uh, restoration, rehabilitation. Uh, it doesn't matter which approach, uh, which approach you go about. But one of the one of the principle stated in uh, conservation in conservation, it must have a minimum intervention and a maximum preservation. And so we have to ensure that uh, a new buildings um, that has been built uh, close closely or attached to the old buildings to normally the new building should not be uh, should not be uh, bigger or should not be taller than the existing building okay this is uh, a striking walkway and look out at an old mining site near rioza spain uh, which made from concrete rusty steel and recycled wood and act as a rest stop and viewing points for visitors. So this is the old structure. So on top of it, uh, they decided to build a wooden structure. So this is like a lookout point. And so uh, the visitor can see the view. Yeah. So th this old structure actually has been used as a support these uh, wooden walkways and this is a rusted l-shaped cotton steel volume replaces the missing corner of a crumbling renaissance palace in the renovation of an ancient site in hungary and so this is the uh, ruins eh? the ruins of a renaissance palace in hungary so they built a new structure eh? just near to that particular building uh, to complement the building and to suit the best uh, the new use uh, okay this is a new columba art museum designed by peter zomtor transfers the sum of the existing fragments into one complete building uh, so you can see from here this is the old structure the ruined structure so they preserve this part and they built a new uh, art museum, yeah, but uh, 
at the same time they still uh, try their best uh, to preserve uh, the old parts of the buildings okay uh, okay some of the example is quite interesting but somehow actually uh, in some cases uh, i mean uh, we cannot simply um, do uh, the adaptation or adaptive reuse without thinking much on the uh, existing or heritage building so this is a uh, reid buildings by stephen hall architects in glasgow so this is a project that has been uh, completed in 2014 where you can see how uh, these new buildings yeah, built on top or superimposed by uh, these uh, old buildings but these old buildings still still uh, in use and this is a museum in germany yeah. so how uh, how they built this is the new parts of the building and this is the old one but if you look at this photo uh, for me i think this part actually is quite uh, glaring and uh, it looks more dominant if compared to these uh, existing buildings which is uh, not advisable actually in uh, conservation principle so this is uh, the italian architect rocco valentini uh, completed the renovation of a 19th century house so look at how actually he did the renovation eh, by putting this uh, i don't know by putting this uh, modern uh, forms of structure uh, to these heritage buildings so just uh, think for yourself whether this is the um, best approach that can be done to heritage building uh, so this is a uh, blank coal hall in united kingdom okay, this is a ruin actually so you can see this uh, heritage building is a ruined structure. Some parts actually has been, uh, uh, I mean, removed, and they insert a new uh, buildings, which actually I I kind of uh, very like 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 of this one, because uh, on how they uh, insert these new buildings without any uh, glaring architecture so they insert uh, in the buildings. okay this is uh so i i'm not sure what what is the building it's this it's this but this is how to just to show how these old buildings and old buildings combine together and uh, to make into one building and this one also this is a new uh, the old uh, buildings and at the back uh, they build up a new building attached to the old buildings okay this is a uh, lachetio in france and this is one of the museum in france so this is also a ruin house and eh, ruin structure uh, which actually cannot be um, cannot be safe anymore so and cannot be rebuilt anymore so they just built a new structure right, inside the uh, old structure and this is uh, one of the building in spain right, how the how a new uh, building uh, uh, built in between the old uh, structure and this one in uh, London, where this uh, old facade retained, and this old building, and uh, at the back, they built up uh, 
this is like a one lot one lot so they build up a new structure uh, and let us see i mean uh, without any um, i mean complicated architecture so they just use a straightforward architecture which actually looks very uh, very nice and actually it can uh, blend together uh, with the old buildings and this is uh, one of the building in Sweden. So this is, uh, I think this is a university uh, buildings. So you can see how actually they built a new structure uh, just uh, next to the heritage building. So I'm not sure what is the function of this building, but the form is uh, quite uh, unique. And this is the uh, building uh, in France. So this is one of the interesting uh, example where actually they built uh, a new structure using a very lightweight material. So this is a glass, a see-through glass, where actually from outside, even though there, there is a new building here, but you can still uh, see the old structure at the back. So this is one of the example or the best example that can be used eh, for adaptive use uh, process. So you, you just imagine if uh, the architect decided to use other materials like brick wall eh, for these new buildings. So uh, exactly it will definitely it will uh, block eh, the facade of the old building at the back. So rather, they use the glass. And this is uh, a building uh, in Portugal. Eh? Also, they built a new buildings uh, inside the ruins. So very lightweight construction, very straightforward architecture. Eh? So, so as to ensure that the new building will not uh, superimpose and eh, the old structure so it blends well together and it can serve a new function eh, to the building and this is uh, the one of the building in georgia eh, how actually they insert this new structure eh, to the existing structure eh. somehow this is very yeah straightforward but uh, I mean, yeah. Some somehow this is uh, can I mean this can be accepted. And this is uh, the auditorium in Spain, where actually this new structure built just uh, opposite uh, the old structure. And okay, I don't know what is the name of this building, but uh, what I can say that this is one of uh bad quite bad example that shouldn't be followed by any other architects when um, dealing with the adaptive reuse uh, for heritage building because this building actually is quite uh, glaring the architecture is quite um, i mean complicated and how actually when you look at this photo, the first thing that you look actually is this part, the, the new part, not the heritage building. But actually in uh, conservation or in um, order to preserving old buildings, and at the same time, uh, when you want to do uh, any additional or any renovation to that particular particular buildings. So the most important things actually that you should uh, have in your mind that you should think of how actually, um, I mean, how actually you're going to ensure that your building uh, will retain uh, its value eh? and its uh, proportion and you have to ensure that the new built structure must not 
superimposed or must not uh, dominant compared to the original buildings. Okay, so I think uh, this is the last photo that I uh, can share with you today. Uh, so with that, thank you for listening. And uh, I hope by listening to this uh, sharing, so all of you uh, would have some uh, better understanding and you should put uh, a lot of thoughts when you uh, prepare your proposal later in a later stage. So you should think of on how to ensure that your adaptive reuse proposal and should uh, give a, give an added value to the existing building and at the same time ensure the preservation of the conservation of that particular building. Thank you.